Hello and welcome to the Kim Iverson Show. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. We do have a lot to cover, so we're going to dive right on in and we're going to start with the breaking news announcement that was released today by the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic. They said, breaking today based on evidence uncovered in COVID Select's recent report, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services commenced formal debarment proceedings against EcoHealth Alliance, meaning EcoHealth Alliance can no longer receive taxpayer funds for any of their research projects. That's what that means. Okay, so we're going to break this down a bit. Um, let's just go ahead and kind of follow follow the, the, the story here. So it starts off in Wuhan, China. If you believe that the virus came from a lab, which we don't know for sure whether it came from a lab or whether it came from nature, could have come from either way, either one theoretically, Many people believe that it came from a lab. Many of us were questioning whether or not it came from a lab, and we were told we were conspiracy theorists for even questioning it. There are numerous labs in question, but the main focus has been on the Wuhan Institute of Virology in Wuhan, Wuhan China, because that seemed to be where the virus was first detected and first spread. There's a lot of evidence, actually, that doesn't quite support that, but yeah, it, it makes um Politicians like to instead just blame everything on China. It's easy rather than actually looking at potentially labs that were here in the United States that may have been doing the same sort of research and whatnot. There's some other leads, but we'll stick with the, the whole idea that it came from potentially Wuhan out of that Wuhan Institute of Virology. So we'll assert it was a lab leak. We'll assert it came from Wuhan for the sake of this, of where we're headed today. EcoHealth Alliance, headed by Peter Daszak, was conducting research at that Wuhan Institute of Virology. That institute in Wuhan, China, was not just Chinese-run, Chinese-funded. It was an international lab. People came from all over the world to do a variety of research. And there's a lot of questions on why they would go to that research lab in particular. Is it because there's relaxed rules? They're able to get away with research that they can't do legally here in the United States. A lot of questions there. So then the question is, well, if the United States, if you can't do a certain type of research here in the United States, should you then be given taxpayer money by the government to go and do illegal research, what would be illegal in the United States, but be able to do it legally somewhere else? That is, that's the accusation that EcoHealth Alliance was receiving taxpayer money and from the government to go to Wuhan, China and they were conducting experiments that are highly controversial, if not even illegal here in the United States, gain-of-function research. But many people in that lab were working on gain-of-function research. It wasn't just United States-funded EcoHealth Alliance, but there were others involved. But nonetheless, taxpayers should be worried about what we're doing with our American money, with American companies all around the world, right? We should be, we should be really cautious about where we're spending our money. So two weeks ago... Um, House lawmakers carted in Peter Daszak from EcoHealth Alliance and asked him a number of questions regarding gain-of-function research. He denied that EcoHealth Alliance had anything to do with any sort of gain-of-function research. Nonetheless, House lawmakers, and, and House lawmakers don't even have that kind of evidence either, actually. There's a lot of suspicion. There's a lot of, there's a lot of reporting. Um, there's a, actually, let me just go ahead and show you. This is the letter from the, from the uh, House Select Subcommittee. Let me just read part of this to you. Um, okay, says here, just uh, dear Dr. Dazik. So this was written. This was just released to him. This is him being notified that they're not going to be funding him anymore. This is to provide notification that on behalf of the United States Department of Health and Human Services, I have suspended and proposed for debarment EcoHealth Alliance from participating in United States federal government procurement and non procurement programs. So then they go on and list the reasons for the suspension. As indicated, I base the suspension and proposed debarment on the information from the following. And he lists all of these different, the, the 10 different reasons why they are pulling the funding from EcoHealth Alliance. They said October 1st, 2013, National Institutes of Health Grants Policy Statement for fiscal year 2013-2014. Um, May 27th, 2014, notice of award for grant number awarded by the NIH National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. May 28th, 2016, a letter from NIAD to EAH. Okay, so they're, they're really kind of listing all of these different letters and grant numbers that they have been, that they've been given, not really specifying. Well, it turns out, what are these about? What they are about is not that they're accusing them of 
you did all of this gain of function research. We now know about it. We're pulling the plug on you. No, they actually are doing kind of a loop and a workaround. They're saying that the documents show that EcoHealth Alliance did not submit things like annual reports to federal officials. At one point, even for nearly two years, Dazit kind of came around and said, well, it's because we couldn't really figure out your website. <laughs> so it was, it was an issue of failing to report um, failing to, to, to report like high risk studies that they were conducting. So they're kind of, they're saying, look, okay, we can't nail you right now on actually doing gain of function research that actually potentially led to the COVID-19 pandemic, but we can get you on all these technicalities, which is that you guys were just running a really shady operation and you weren't reporting everything that you were doing and you missed your deadlines and you should have just been better at running your business. That mixed with the high suspicion, and for good reason. There was a lot of things that were said by Peter Daszak at points. Um, there's been a lot of internal um, from former employees. There have been reports from former employees about highly suspicious re uh, research that was going on. So there's good reason. But, you know, look, a slap on the wrist is what this is. This is nothing. All of the potentially having involved themselves in gain of function research that led to the COVID-19 pandemic and all the government's going to do is pull taxpayer funding and not even taxpayer funding, federal taxpayer funding. So they could potentially get it from the states if they wanted to get it from the states. They just can't get federal funds anymore. I mean, this is just why not actually dig in further, find out who the culprits were, put people in jail if there was an actual gain of function research that led to the COVID-19 pandemic. We want to see these people have serious consequences for ruining our lives for two, three, four years. Instead, they're going to get a slap on the wrist and we're just not going to fund you. And what does that even mean? Are you not going to fund Peter Daszak specifically on any project that he, that, he, uh, that he engages in? It doesn't sound like it. The debarment is on eco health. Okay, so what if they just create a new organization and they start operating under that new organization? Can they then get federal funding? Sounds like it. So this is nothing. This is stupid. This is silly. This is just posturing to make it look like they're doing something about something uh, to, to go after somebody. And it's ultimately meaningless at the end of the day. So unless they got more to give us, I'm not impressed. That's what I'm going to say about this. I'm not impressed. All right, we're going to move on. Um, there, the prime minister of of Slovakia, there was an assassination attempt on him. As of right now, he's in critical condition. He was shot five times. Very devastating potential assassination attempt on him. There's a lot of questions around why he was potentially targeted. There are two big theories that are circulating around that I want to show share with you. Stu Peters puts this one out. And this is a big one trending on social media. Was the prime minister of Slovakia, was he targeted because... He stood up against the WHO and the pandemic treaty. If you remember, they're trying to put together, the WHO is trying to put together a um, really kind of skirt our sovereignty by saying that they would control any sort of future pandemic response. Countries would sign on to this and basically hand over the keys to the WHO. And of course, the big players that are funding the WHO, which include the Bill Gates Foundation, other nations, any power players that have any sort of sway at the WHO would then have a response would have power over nations response during pandemics and other types of health crises that the WHO would be ahead of or in charge of. So one theory is that the Slovakian prime minister refused. He came out publicly saying, I'm not going to sign this. I'm not for this. This is crap. And then he suddenly has an assassination attempt against them. So here's the full, here's the, um, here's the, the tweet. He says the world health organization just made an assassination attempt on Robert Fico, the prime minister of Slovakia. This comes days after Fico publicly rejected the WHO's global pandemic accord. So was he assassinated or the attempted assassination? Let's hope he makes it. Was this attempted assassination due to him uh, rejecting the pandemic treaty? Well, other news. Uh, the UK also rejected the treaty just a few days ago, and the prime minister of the UK is safe and sound. Nothing's happened to anybody in the UK. So my guess is no, the assassination attempt had nothing to do with the WHO pandemic treaty. It was bigger news that the UK actually rejected it at this point. The UK came out and said, we can't sign this. 
this is not up to our standards. We're not going to go along with this. And so that's a huge nation, major Western nation saying, no, we're not going to sign the, we're not going to sign the, um, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. Right. Okay. The other thought is, is that the prime minister of Slovakia, the attempted assassination had to do with this. You can see in this video that he was speaking out very much against the Ukraine and Russia war. He was no longer in, he wasn't supporting Ukraine. He was very vocal in not supporting Ukraine. So there is the thought that perhaps the assassination attempt has to do with the fact that he would not support Ukraine at all anymore. In fact, um, he campaigned on this. He was elected last year. Let me just read a little bit from the New York Times saying that Robert Fico, the Slovakian prime minister whose life was in danger after being shot on Wednesday, was elected in 2023, completing an unlikely, unlikely political comeback after resigning from the position in 2018. So he was prime minister back in 2018, came back in 2023. He ran on a very populist platform that we're seeing sweep across Europe, we're seeing sweep across the United States. He won on social conservatism, nationalism, anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, and promises of generous welfare programs. But it was another key plank in his campaign that alarmed many countries in the West, his unsparing support for Russia in its war against Ukraine. Um, he said that he was no longer going to be giving, and he was halting all military aid to Ukraine and said um, that, you know, he just, he, he didn't want to, he didn't want to continue supporting this. Let's just, I'm going to read He's speaking in his language, so I'm going to go ahead and just read this to you. So he says, we're trying to open the discussion on an immediate ceasefire. Stopping the fighting and starting negotiations. I honestly think it's better to argue for 10 years at the negotiating table um, than to let Russians and Ukrainians kill each other for 10 years. Good point. The question is, who wants what? It seems to me that the West is extraordinarily supporting this war. Here's the thought that arose in 2022 when several Western countries discouraged Ukraine from signing a peace deal with Russia. We'll use the war in Ukraine to weaken Russia. We will support Ukraine militarily, economically, impose sanctions on Russia and weaken Russia internationally, politically, economically, financially, but it's not working. Yeah, he's right. It's not working. The war has been going on for two years. We find that Russia's territorial gains are greater than those of Ukraine. We have a huge number of dead soldiers, injured soldiers on both sides. Russia is surviving economically and politically. President Putin has a lot of support. So maybe we have the right to raise the question, is the Western strategy good? I argue that the Western strategy in Ukraine is not working. Okay. Uh, guy has a point, right? I mean, he's really spitting facts and spitting the truth right there. And now he's laying in a hospital fighting for his life after five gunshot wounds. Was it because of this? Maybe. Was it for other reasons? Just some pissed off, crazy person that decided to pick up a gun and shoot their prime minister that day? Maybe. I mean, we, we don't really know. I don't think, though that the WHO, the pandemic treaty, was the reason for this. People are, are, that one is really heavily circulating on social media. I don't think it has anything to do with that just because the UK also snubbed it. The United States is also likely to snub it. I don't think it has anything to do with that. But the war in Ukraine is a much bigger issue, I think, for the shadowy power players underneath, the people that want to make a lot of money, the people that want to see this war continue to go on. They, I think, have more of a reason if there was somebody that was going to go out there and actually try to kill the guy. It would maybe be because of that. But, you know, and the fact that he's now in charge of, an, of a nation, he's the prime minister of a Western nation. They're supposed to all be in lockstep. Most of them are in lockstep. So when you suddenly have a guy that's not, and he's got this sort of populist message that is starting to spread, I could see more of a reason for wanting to stop that guy than because of the pandemic treaty. That's just my thought on this. Um, but of course, wishing the guy. The best do not want to see that, uh, don't want to see anything. You know, uh, we'll see what happens. He's fighting for his life. Wish him the absolute best because we need more people out there spitting the truth like this guy and speaking in front of Western leaders and saying, you guys, you guys are wrong on this. It didn't work. Your strategy failed. Time to move on.
Hey guys, thank you for watching this clip from the full Kim Iverson show, which you could catch just by heading to that link down below, kimiversonshow.com. You can watch the full show from what you just watched, or you could catch the full show live Monday through Friday, live streams, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern at kimiversonshow.com. See you then. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Never miss an episode. Never miss a clip. Never miss a segment. Thanks, guys.